So, John is a Targaryen. It is known. But what the hell is his real name? Hey guys, it's Chris and I'm back with another Game of Thrones Season 7 video and recently an article leaked in Empire Magazine. Well, I wouldn't say leaked, it was actually published in Empire Magazine, but I'm not really sure if this is confirmed. So definitely a spoiler warning here. This could contain spoilers, although again, it's not confirmed, but the article talked about Jon Snow's real name and it seems to be attributed to Isaac Hempstead Wright, the guy who plays Bran, but nevertheless, a quick spoiler warning in case you don't want to know anything about Game of Thrones Season 7. So anyway, this article came out in Empire Magazine where they did interview Isaac Hempstead Wright, but they kind of inferred a little bit of information here, I think, and didn't really put in the article what Isaac actually said but they said here in this article as we saw in the last episode of season six brands isaac hempstead wright psychic time traveling green sight revealed the true nature of john's birth heritage and his real name jaharis targaryen so in a nutshell they seem to put words in his mouth and give away the potential fact that john's true name is jaharis targaryen now i do think this is certainly possible but i also think there's some other options as well for the show at least so anyway, let's get into the reasons why it could be Jaehaerys, and then we'll go over a couple more names as well. So Jaehaerys I Targaryen was the fourth king to rule in Westeros, as far as a Targaryen king at least. Now what's really interesting here is Jaehaerys I was also known as the Conciliator, the Wise, as well as the Old King. Now he was called the Old King because he reigned the longest in Westerosi history. He reigned for 55 damn years, and that's a long damn time for that kind of time period. He was also known as Jaehaerys the Wise because of all the things he accomplished as King of Westeros. This was actually a very, very good time for Westeros for the most part. Jaehaerys' reign seemingly delivered justice, prosperity, and peace in Westeros. So it was a very, very good time, and he was very, very well loved by all the people of Westeros. Even Dorne loved Jaehaerys, and in the books at least, Dorne's not really even appreciative of Targaryen kings. King Jaehaerys was also a dragon rider who rode a dragon called Vermithor. This could certainly be a parallel with modern day Jon Snow. And when he died, he was cremated in the dragon pit at King's Landing, which I think we'll see in season seven, which could be a little shout out to that as well, before we, the audience, find out the truth of his birth and his real name. And he did a few notable things in history as well, such as negotiating with the faith, the faith of the seven, that is, and bringing back the power of justice to the king and the crown versus the faith. He also abolished what's called the Lord's right to the first knight, which is to say that the king or a lord could have, um, a good time with your wife before you did on the night you get married. Actually, Roose Bolton mentioned that in A Dance with Dragons in the books where he actually says that that was abolished, but where the old gods are, mainly up in the north, a lot of those practices still stand. And another thing to add to his resume, him and his wife, Alysanne, basically negotiated or possibly forced the Starks into giving up some of their land in the north to the Night's Watch and is now known as the Gift. And of course, in the show, we know that this is where the Wildings come in and supposedly set up camp south of the Wall in exchange for their help when the real war comes. Now, the most interesting thing here about Jaehaerys I, Targaryen, was that he was also known as the Conciliator. And if you look up the definition of Conciliator, it is known as a person who acts as a mediator between two disputing people or groups. So that fits John down to a T because he is the Song of Ice and Fire, he is Stark and Targaryen, and he is the one that's going to be kind of leading everybody into this war for the dawn by getting everybody together. He's going to try to bring all these people together, all these various houses, whether they're enemies or not, for the greater good and the war to come. So that in itself seems to fit John to a T as far as what his character is based off King Jaehaerys and what he was called as the fourth Targaryen king in Westeros that was beloved by most if not all. So I think that definitely would fit, and this may be actually what's going to happen, but I think in the show you have a couple more options as well, even the books for that matter. I said this last year in my episode 10 breakdown when we saw the Tower of Joy, I think he could have said also Aemon or Aegon. Now Aemon Targaryen, also known as Aemon the Dragon Knight, was somebody that Jon actually pretended to be when he was a kid, in the books at least, when him and Rob were fighting in the yard at Winterfell as far as sword playing with Sir Roderick Castle, Jon would often pretend to be Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight, and it also fits very well with Jon meeting Aemon Targaryen, otherwise known as Maester Aemon at the Wall, who just so happened to keep up with Rhaegar Targaryen and keep in touch with him when he was at the Wall serving the Night's Watch, and Rhaegar was still the Crown Prince and then Robert's Rebellion took place. But there's also another possibility for the show, at least, and that could be Aegon. Now, in the books, we do have an Aegon Targaryen, supposedly. A lot of people call him Phaegon. He is supposedly the surviving son of Rhaegar Targaryen, who was supposedly killed 
during the sack of King's Landing, but apparently escaped because of some baby swap that Varys pulled off. And now in the books, he is actually coming to Westeros as well to try to take over the Seven Kingdoms, and he's actually already landed in Westeros in the books, whereas Danny is still in Marine. So I wouldn't think it would be like that in the books, but the show, there is a possibility since they didn't include the Aegon character in the show. Now this is one thing I think could possibly be different in the books. I don't think it's going to be different as far as who John is. I think that's a major plot point that has to be the same both books and show. But in the show, at least, since they don't have the young Griff slash Aegon character, I think that's a possibility that at least in the show, they could just call John Aegon Targaryen as far as his real name, because even show watchers know the basics behind Aegon the Conqueror and how he came to Westeros and basically started the Targaryen dynasty. But anyway, I'm fine with either one of those. I think Jaehaerys fits very well. I think Aemon fits very well. And I think at least in the show, Aegon would fit as well. But I'm not so sure they'll go that route because there are too many Aegons and it may confuse people. Now keep in mind also that the name John was chosen by Ned in honor of John Aaron, who raised Ned and Robert Baratheon in the Eyrie, as far as the fostering goes, where they met and became best friends when they were younger. So that's why he chose Jon Snow. So I don't think it was a play off his real name or anything. He was simply named after Jon Aaron to hide his true name, which could be, again, Jaehaerys, Aemon, Aegon, whatever it may be. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think Jon's true name is going to be? And do you think we're going to get that reveal in Season 7? Or is that going to be a Season 8 thing? And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers, Paul Griffin, Ball Guy 10, La La Gig, Kisa Powell, Mark Joseph, Marilyn Bentley, Joanna, Sean Hayes, Anonymous, Doc Holliday, Gaska, Hoon Jive, Kieran D20, and Nikki Snow. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. And to everybody out there in YouTube land, I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to get everything, and be sure to click that damn notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new damn video. So thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you next time.